For the past three months, I have been developing a game engine with C++ and Lee Vulcan graphics API. I have implemented mesh outlining, mouse picking, and using gizmos to modify the transform of an object. However, all of this happened in the game scene directly, and it's about time we built an editor for the game engine. This month, I finally started working on the editor, and here is how I do it. When we talk about the editor of a game engine, we are usually referring to the graphical user interface that allows us to modify the scene and manage game assets. The bare minimum editor layout usually consists of three windows. The viewport window previews the game scene we are editing. The outliner window displays the scene hierarchy of nodes or components. And finally, the inspector window lets us inspect the properties of the selected object in a scene. We need some kind of logic to partition the editor windows. The class responsible for this is usually called the window manager. More specifically, I am a fan of how Blender's window manager allow you to split each area either vertically or horizontally. So I implemented such a window manager class in my UI module. I haven't read Blender's source code, but I am currently using a binary tree to represent the window partitions. Each leaf node in the binary tree represents a window area, and each non-leaf node represents a split. These split nodes record the direction of the split, as well as a partition ratio. The window manager uses this binary tree representation to manage the area of each window. While the window manager handles the controls and input logic of the windows, it does not render them directly. To draw pixels onto the screen, my engine uses a render graph that consists of nodes called render components. Currently, the game scene you see uses a forward rendering component to draw itself. When we open a scene in the editor, I use a scene overlay component to apply outlining and render gizmos. This is the image that we see in the viewport window. After drawing the scene image, I have a screen render component that draws all the widgets in a single render pass. I also wanted to implement some eye candy for my editor, so I use a blur algorithm called Duo Kawase to perform blurring on the entire editor image. Duo Kawase blur is a relatively cheap method for real-time graphics blurring. Here I am using three down sample passes and three up sample passes to blur the entire editor image. Now that we have a blurred version of the editor, how is this useful? So after the screen blurring, I use yet another screen render component, this time rendering overlays onto the current editor image. Overlays may include floating windows, tooltips, and basically any UI that is above the base layer. The toolbar in the viewport window counts as an overlay, and it uses the blurred editor image as its background. This is purely eye candy, and I'll probably add an option to skip the blur process to support lower-end PCs. So even for a super simple scene like this, we already require a lot of render components. A real game will require more than just a single forward render component. The game scene will probably also need to render UI in screen space, so we will have to add screen render components in the game scene as well. So what is the performance of the editor? Well, if we run the release build of the editor inside a graphics debugger such as RenderDuck, then we can see that RenderDuck actually tracks the approximate frame time and on the top left corner, we can see that the editor runs pretty consistently at around one millisecond. And for a game running at 60 frames per second, we have a budget of 16.6 milliseconds. And we're only using like one millisecond of the budget. Now, to be fair, the game scene is really empty, and I am running this on a very beefy RTX 4060 laptop chip, so the performance here is pretty much expected, and there is nothing to brag about. The good news is that when we ship the final game, we will not be rendering the editor and all that stuff, so it's actually going to be running faster than the profiling results here. I also haven't done any optimization just yet, so I'll definitely make sure it runs well on lower-end PCs before releasing. So that's about it for this month. We finally have an editor after four months. 
It still looks very immature, but it's a humble beginning and we can always iteratively improve on it. I am now working on scene representation and the asset manager. When we open a game engine editor, we expect to be able to start a new project, load scenes, and import all kinds of assets. There's quite a few trade-offs that I have to make here for the asset and scene data format, because the format that is editor-friendly isn't always runtime-friendly. So I'm trying to strike a balance here, or maybe just use different data formats for the editor and runtime asset loading. Still trying to figure this out. Hopefully in a few months, we will be able to run a game scene inside the editor, because currently the scene is completely static. Most engines will have a play button in the editor, and I am definitely working towards that. In the meantime, if you are interested in game engine development or game dev, please consider leaving a comment or subscribe to the channel. Any suggestions or questions are welcome. The engine is open source on GitHub, link in the description, and that's about it.